Hey guys, how's it going? So today we are going to start by planting one of the Serbian spruce trees that uh, we had left over from our pond project. You know, I uh, kind of over prepared. I wanted to have a lot of options of things that we could put around in that area. So now we are starting to work through kind of that little pile of plants we had back by the barn. In fact, Paul is going to be bringing that tree out on the tractor here in just a moment and this is where it's gonna go. I think this is the perfect area for it. You know, we've got the Shade Master Honey Locust, which will, you know, take up this area. There is a blue spruce right underneath. There's a blue spruce right here. I think I'm gonna be putting something blue right over here and then possibly something small and blue here. So I think having that Serbian, which is kind of a bicolor blue-green, right in this area will be really nice. And you know, we recently just planted from the same load that taller of the three birch trees right there, the Renaissance reflection. Anyway, this area is coming together. We love the walkway. Eventually you won't be able to see it. You know, it'll just kind of draw you through here and this will be completely packed out with plants. But for now, this spot right here. So I think I'm gonna start digging while he's getting the tree loaded. And we might tackle one other tree from that load, but other than that, I think we just need to run around and do some maintenance, some deadheading, uh, cutting back, things like that. You're kind of expecting it, and then all that Wish weight. There was a way we could figure out how to put these in the paint because it's a little bit easier. Maybe we strapped up the root ball. We've tried that though before, haven't we?
All right, guys, we got two spruces in and they both look so, so great. Spruce number one, isn't that just perfect right there? And we have plenty of space to add in some more color. You know, I try to go, like I was explaining, you know, the Zafiro, which I'll show you. This one doesn't get super big, but it's nice and bright. Got lots of pretty things around it. That one grows eight by six right there. So I always try, oh, I like that too. Oh, that's so pretty. Look at how gorgeous. That's the Niagara Falls Panicum. Boy, I drive by this so many times a day and just now realized how gorgeous of a structure it's got. Dang, I like that. Might need to add some more in here. Anyway, there's another one right through there. So, you know, I can add in some lower growing. I've got some uh, real pretty small blue spruces. You know, from this angle, it looks like that tree is tipped. We had the hardest time trying to get this one straight. So we decided just to, to uh, get it planted. We'll get it watered in. And if we need to stake it at some point, like it looks good from this angle here. It's got a little bit of a weird shape because you can see, you know, see right here how it looks like it dips in. There isn't as much growth on that side, which makes it kind of an optical illusion. So I don't think it's tipped. I think that trunk is as straight as can be, straight as we can get it. So we made sure to come in here. We removed all of the uh, baling twine that, you know, was tied around all the burlap. And we got most of the metal cage off. And then there is a little bit of burlap in here that I'm just going to cut away. But this will fall apart over time. You know, a lot of people say that you can plant your trees in that metal cage that the, the B and B trees oftentimes come in. Uh, but I'm a little bit leery of doing that and we try to remove it on most everything as much of the cage as we can anyway because you know that big blue spruce that fell down in the windstorm which was I don't even know how many years old like decades old it still had the metal cage at the base and there were roots wrapped around it it had not broken down and you know I think that over time those metal cages are supposed to rust and fall apart and I think in more wet climates that's probably true but here where it's a lot more dry I just don't think it happens as quickly and it could be to the detriment of the tree. Maybe, maybe not, but we just feel better about removing as much of it as possible. So we have the bolt cutters out. We try to cut away as much of it as we can. It makes me feel better about it anyway. <laughs> I just think these are such pretty trees. And you can see the little cones up there. They are so cute. And they tend to perform really well in our garden. Okay, we're gonna head over to the other one. And this other one looks like it got scorched on one side, kind of like our oak trees did in transit. But I think it'll be fine. I'm just gonna clip the little fried ends off and it should be, should rebound. It's right there. Oh, it looks so good. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. So we've got a bonnie blue spruce which we planted this year and there's a whole bunch of other beautiful things in this area a forest pansy redbud which is thriving and honestly the one that we you know kind of lost more than half of it it didn't leave out this spring it's kind of coming back a little bit so i don't know we'll see what happens with that but we've got the blue spruce and the blue willow which is just doing its thing and looking awesome right here and then also the totem pole panicum in that blue tone so even though we've got a great big green Norway, I thought it might be nice to have something that kind of skewed green, even though this is kind of a bicolor. And then here's that dry side right here. So I just need to come along with my pruners. It's just pretty minor stuff right here. I don't think it's gonna hurt the tree whatsoever. A little bit more toward the base where maybe it was laying down on the truck. But at least we were able to face that toward the interior of the flower bed. And even though at this moment you can see the backside, you know, this area will fill in as well. That totem pole grass is just so stunning, isn't it? Taller than me. Big old hibiscus there. There's the sparkling amethyst superbina, little garden tour. Hardy geraniums here. I think this is Johnson's Blue. Uh, we've got the Senorita roses. But look at this grass. So I'm 5'4". <laughs> so that's like over six feet, right? At the very tippy top. That's amazing. Can't believe it does that all in one season. Look at all those cones up in there. I love spruce cones, they're so pretty. They're much more slender than pine cones uh, and easier to work into like holiday arrangements. All right, so that's all the planting we're gonna do. I'm gonna take a quick break to water in the greenhouses and then I think we'll spend a little time in the rose garden. I wanna update you on how they're looking. Uh, they need to be deadheaded. And I thought we would uh, kind of do a progress report on the thrip damage 
and how the predatory mites are doing. So we'll be back in just a few minutes after I'm done watering. All right, guys, I got my watering done. So now we're here in the cut flower garden. The rose garden is right behind me. And I do wanna do some deadheading, although we are supposed to get some weather. We have a 10 degree drop in temperature from today to tomorrow, which usually means a nice stiff breeze throughout the evening. So I don't know how far we'll get on the actual work here, but I really wanted to talk through the predatory mite release. It's been not quite two weeks ago at this point. I think we're at like 12, day 12, and I am not noticing, well, I don't wanna say any thrips, but I'm really not noticing any thrips. And maybe we can pop a picture up on the screen of what a thrip looks like. They look like tiny little slivers. Honestly, they're very hard to see. Most of the time I notice that I have them if I see them starting to drop out on the table beneath where I'm like doing a flower arrangement. And that's where I noticed them this year. I didn't notice any like tremendous damage on the plants yet. And they are sap sucking insects. So you'll start to notice the leaves change um, on roses. It can kind of misshape the flowers a little bit. I hadn't noticed any of that yet. So I think we got ahead of it. Uh, and I am just, if this is actually true, I don't know if it's hopeful thinking or wishful thinking, but if those predatory mites have indeed taken care of the thrip issue out here, game changer for me. But real quick, look at the rose garden. I mean, based on what these look like when we put them in, they look like sticks, most of them. A few of them had leaves, but they have just put on a tremendous amount of growth. They need to be looked after quite a lot at the moment. I mean, they need to be deadheaded, but there's some just gorgeous ones out here. This one is called Symbol. Look at how beautiful that is. This one is Fun in the Sun. And see, this is a new bloom and it looks perfect. I don't see any sort of damage on it at all. I think I was seeing thrips on some of these older ones that we're gonna deadhead today. The flowers that I noticed a lot of thrips on in particular, there were thrips in the roses, but there were some in the dahlias and then especially in the snapdragons because you know, snapdragons have the closed flowers. So um, as I was checking on these things after the predatory mites were released, I did notice the thrip population stayed the biggest in the snapdragons the longest. Here in the dahlias, I noticed the thrips a little bit more in the darker colored ones, just because I think that the color of the bug contrasts the color of the petal. And I wish my camera showed close-ups, but as I'm kind of going through, I don't, I don't see any. Before they were kind of just pouring out of the flowers. So this is an improvement, even if there's a few still left. I don't see any. There's a little black bug. Oh, and a little spider. Excellent, I'm, I'm okay with those. See that little spider? Ooh. It's just so exciting to me because I kind of was just writing off the whole cut flower garden thinking, well, if we don't get ahead of this thrip issue, I'm not gonna spray because I don't wanna, I don't wanna uh, harm all the bumblebees that are out here. And they're still out here in droves. I mean, we have so many bumblebees. So now I feel like we'll give it a little bit more time and then I'm gonna start using these flowers again. I do, however, think that we're gonna skip overwintering dahlias in the ground because I'm thinking that because the rips overwinter in garden debris, we had a good foot, foot and a half of garden debris sitting on top of these dahlias to keep them warm during the winter. And it's likely that if I had thrips last year, maybe in a very small amount, they may have overwintered in all that debris and they're here with a vengeance this year. So I think maybe skipping that step and having a cleaner slate out here might be better for the health of the plants. We'll see, plus the dahlia patch, uh, it's not been as productive this year with the plants that I overwintered versus when I just start over. So anyway, it's been a very interesting learning experiment experience, whatever, it's been interesting. Lizzie Anthus are looking beautiful. Oh my word. Oh, look at these. I need to get some of these cut for my mom. They're so pretty. And I've had just the best luck with straw flowers this year. Look at how tall these are. They're massive. Gorgeous, look at these. Oh, and I love these apricot colored ones. Okay, so these are looking kind of rough, but you can see that the plants are putting out new stems right now. So I really just need to come through and deadhead these. But I was looking around, let's see, let's pull this one off right here. Oh, or this one off right here. Take a couple. So I don't know how well you'll be able to see, but if we pull these apart, see how there's like that middle section? Yeah, there's still some thrips in there. One, two, uh, you probably can't see them. There's two there. Let's see. One, two, 
I see one right there. Not bad though, compared to like 15, 20 that I saw before. So definitely not out of the woods with the thrip population, but doing so much better, marked improvement um, versus where they were at before. And you know, I'm okay just kind of letting things be and just enjoying the color out here the way it is uh, this year, just to learn more about these predatory insects and maybe timing it a little bit differently next year, knowing that, you know, thrips can overwinter. It's probably something I'm gonna be thinking about from year to year because I don't wanna, you know, forfeit blooms every single year. So if we could release the predatory mites a little bit earlier, I mean, you definitely wanna make sure there's a food source for them so they don't take off and, and leave. Um, but maybe I can get ahead of it next year. It's just such an interesting topic to me and something that I would really like to learn more about. So if that means experimenting for even several years to figure it out and find the right balance so that we have a really healthy ecosystem out here, that means a whole lot to me. So anyway, let's go deadhead some roses. Okay, let's just start with this one first because it's got some real pretty color. I'm not looking at doing a lot of full stem removal because I want to leave pretty color, but if there is a flower that I know I'm not going to use in an arra arrangement, even if there's some pretty color, I'll remove that so that the plant doesn't continues to send energy to that one. But if, let's say I did want to remove this stem, let's say all of these were spent, they're all connected. If you follow this down, you'll see that they're all connected here. So I would follow it down until about the first set of five leaves there and we would just make our cut right above that, remove that whole stem. Uh, or if you wanted to go down even one more, see how that leaf is facing outward? You'll want to cut it above a set of leaves that's pointing the direction you want the new stem to go, if that makes sense. Because if I were to cut it above this one, it's gonna send a stem this way, which I don't necessarily wanting, want it to go back to the center of the plant. So if I go down one more, it will send the new stem out pretty much the same direction this one's going, which that is perfect for the shape of this plant. So just keep that in mind. Like you wouldn't want to come down and cut it right above this one here because then your new branch is going to take off in the direction those leaves are going, which will then try to compete with other branches. I hope that makes sense. Also, when you are deadheading uh, or taking stems off, if you don't go down far enough, like if you go down to a first set of three leaves, you can get what's called blind wood that won't actually produce more flowers. So I usually try to find a set of five leaves, clip it above a set of five leaves, that's going in, in the direction you want it to go, and you're usually pretty set after that. But today it's more about just removing individual stems like these here that have seen better days. Whoops, there we go. And see, I just took those down to where they connected. And then we can still enjoy the color off these flowers and these can go away. And there's this one, let's see. So this is a stem I followed, it doesn't look that great. I'm gonna follow it down. See this set of leaves is five right here. It's pointing in the direction I want the next branch to go. So I'm just gonna clip it, it doesn't have to be a slender. I think my camera just shut off mid-sentence. Sorry about that. I was in the middle of saying that it can be a slanted cut or not. It doesn't matter at all. I know like I grew up always making the slanted cut, but some people will say that making a straight cut is actually less surface area open for like things to enter in. It's less of a wound on the plant. So I've kind of switched to doing more straight some of the time, unless it's drip tube and I always seem to make slanted cuts on drip tube. Anyway, I'm just gonna get as much done as I can here. I hope all of that made sense. We've done other videos on rose deadheading before, so maybe we can link one of those where I'm a little more detailed. Okay, let's get it done.
All right, I got all the deadheading done. Barely a breeze out here right now. So I don't know if it's the calm before the storm. We'll see what happens. But I love being out here deadheading. It might seem like a chore. Sometimes it is a chore if you're, you know, pressed for time, that sort of thing. But I just love having my bucket and going along and just tidying plants up. I did take off some larger branches on these roses just to kind of, uh, on some of them, I wanted the canopies to be a little bit tighter. If they didn't have a lot of action going on on the top of that branch, I just took it all the way back so that it met everything. And it just looks a little bit more kept at the moment. I do need to come back along though. You can see a lot of the drip tubing has been exposed. We need to remulch in this area and that will make it look extra tidy. But right now the county fair in our area is going on and I can hear the announcer. It's not too far away from where we're at. I can hear the announcements for different contests starting and I don't know, it's such a, a sweet feel when that's going on. And I did run across a few thrips uh, in some of the older flowers here in the roses as I got more and more into it, but definitely a, uh, like I said, a marked decrease in population. So that's a great thing. So I will continue to report to you guys how that's going out here. In the meantime, I'm just enjoying it. It's just so fun with all the color in here. And really there's not like a huge push to get it all cut all at once uh, so that we can get bouquets out. It's just like, let's learn this year. Let's learn about insects. Let's learn about how we can create a healthier atmosphere out here for everybody. So anyway, that is it for today, you guys. Uh, we are actually gonna get ready ourselves to go down to the county fair this evening with the kids. So we're gonna have dinner there and take a look at all the animals. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.